Summary of Gathering Blue by Lois Lowry Katrina, the mother of a girl named Kira, dies at the beginning of the book. Kira lives in a town where the sick and weak are taken to die in the field of the living. After they die, someone has to watch the spirit leave the dead body for the next four days. Katrina dies in the house she shared with Kira, which is called a cot. Kira drags her mother's body to the field, where she watches her spirit leave for four days. Kira has a bad leg. When she was born, the locals wanted to leave her in the field to die, but Katrina demanded that she keep Kira because she knows her daughter is smart and good with her hands. Christopher, Kira's father, was meant to be on the Council of Guardians, which is in charge of the town. However, he was killed by wild animals while hunting before Kira was born. When Kira comes back from the field, she sees her friend Matt, a young, rowdy boy who lives in the fun, a poorer, dirty area close by. Matt tells Kira that Vandara, a scary woman, wants to build a pen for young children, called Tykes, on the spot where Kira lives. When Kira goes back to her hut, the village women, led by Vandara, come up to her with rocks and stones. Kira saves her own life by telling them that if they kill someone without the council's permission, they will also die. Vandara drops her rock, but she tells Kira that she will bring her to court tomorrow. Kira wonders what she can say to the council that will make them let her stay in the town. Because of her bad leg, she can't do much work, but she's a great seamstress. The next day, a servant brings Kira to the council edifice, where Kira and Vandara are put on trial by the council of elders. Kira has been to the edifice before for the gathering, an event that happens once a year and that everyone in the town has to go to. During the gathering, the singer sings a long song called The Ruin Song, which is about how every society in history has grown and fallen. Vandara says that Kira is lazy and can't do any work at the trial. She says that Kira should be left to die in the field of the living. One of the younger guardians, Jameson, is chosen by the head guardian of the council to protect Kira. Jameson says that Kira should be allowed to stay because she is the granddaughter of a past top guardian and is a good weaver. Kira holds on to a cloth that she always has with her as she listens to Jameson. Kira takes the cloth with her because it reminds her that she is a good maker and because it sometimes seems to talk to her. For example, right now the cloth is telling her not to worry. The council decides that Kira will be taken to live and work as a weaver in the council edifice. This makes Vandara very angry. Kira gets her last few things from her cot with the help of Matt and moves into the council edifice. Matt gives her a necklace that her mother used to wear, and Kira chooses to put it on. She meets Thomas the Carver, a boy who makes the singer's staff, in the edifice. Kira will fix the dress of the singer. Thomas tells Kira that she can do whatever she wants as long as she gets her work done. At first, Kira doesn't like her new home, the edifice, because she has never lived anywhere with running water or indoor plumbing. But over time, she gets used to living in the edifice. Kira will go to the house of an old woman named Annabella, who also taught Katrina how to weave, in order to fully master the art of weaving. Kira goes to Annabella's house with Matt. There, she starts to learn the names of plants that can be used to color threads. Annabelle tells Kira that blue-colored plants can be found yonder. Even though the council forbids women to learn to read, Thomas helps Kira by writing down the names of the plants and the colors that go with them. He then reads this information to Kira whenever she needs it. He also says that he has heard a child crying in the middle of the night, but neither he nor Kira know what this means. Kira looks at the robe and sees that it shows a never-ending cycle of peace and war. Cities grow, but then they burn to the ground. She likes the peaceful parts, which are mostly green and gold, better than the angry parts, which are mostly red and orange. She also wants to add blue to the robe, but she doesn't know where to get it. Thomas and Kira get to know each other as they work on their projects and eat lunch together. Thomas was also raised by no one. When he was a child, his parents died in a strange way, and he was taken to live in the edifice. Like Kira, Thomas keeps a small thing he made as a child, a beautiful wood figure. Like Kira's cloth, Thomas's carving tells him whether he should be afraid or not. 
Thomas, on the other hand, sees his cutting as a sign of creativity and knowledge that he no longer has. Kira, on the other hand, thinks that her creativity and knowledge of weaving are still growing. When Kira goes to visit Annabella at her cottage, Annabella tells her that there aren't any wild animals. Soon after that, Kira and Thomas hear a child crying again. They decide to find out where the sound is coming from, so they ask Matt and Branch, his dog, for help. On a lower floor of the edifice, they hear Jameson talking angrily to a small child. Matt says he knows the child, Joe, from the fen. Joe is a talented singer who disappeared for no apparent reason. Shortly after this, Kira tells Jameson that Annabella told her there were no beasts. Jameson says that Annabella is losing her wisdom. Kira finds out the next day that Annabella has died. She starts to have doubts about Jameson. Kira goes back to the floor where Jameson yelled at Joe. She talks to Joe from behind a door and finds out that Joe is being held against her will in the edifice. When Kira tells Thomas this, he doesn't believe her at first, but over time, they both come to understand that the council has taken them away from their homes and forced them to use their artistic skills for the gathering. Thomas and Kira go to see Joe, and Thomas opens Joe's door with a key he made. Kira tries to make Joe feel better and shows her how to tap on the ceiling if she feels in danger. This will let Kira and Thomas know that she needs help. Kira also finds out that Matt has gone on a quest. When she and Thomas go to the fun, Matt's brother tells them that Matt has gone looking for blue for Kira. As the gathering gets closer, Jameson compliments Kira on how she fixed the singer's robe. He shows her a blank spot on the robe and tells her that this is where she will weave the future under the council's watch. On the day of the gathering, everyone in the town goes to the council edifice and stands in the hall. Kira, Thomas, and Joe all sit in chairs that are different. The singer starts to sing the long ruin song. He is wearing the robe that Kira fixed and is holding the staff that Thomas has been making. Kira sees Matt crawling around among the locals while he is singing. She also hears a mechanical clank, and something about the singer shocks her. After the gathering is over, Kira sees Matt again. He tells her he has brought her two gifts, one small and one large. The small gift is a small piece of blue fabric, and the big gift is a blind, scarred man who is wearing a blue shirt. The man shows a necklace that Kira's mother also wore, and he says that he is Kira's father, Christopher. Christopher says that during one hunt, a rival hit him in the head with a club, making him blind for life, cut him, and left him to die in the field of the living. Christopher was taken from the field by an unknown group of people, who took him to a new town and brought him back to health. Christopher says that almost everyone in this new town is hurt or crippled in some way, so everyone is kind and gentle. Christopher didn't go back to his village because he thought he would still be in danger there. But when Matt found him, he quickly figured out that the weaver who was Matt's friend must be Christopher's own daughter. Kira tells Christopher that he doesn't have to worry about his life because she has a friend on the Council of Guardians. Christopher tells Jameson that he tried to kill him. Christopher makes plans to bring Kira back to the new group he is a part of, and then he and Matt go to a safe place to rest. That night, Kira thinks about what she saw at the gathering, a heavy chain around the singer's leg. Kira learns that she is a prisoner of the council. The council has taken Kira, Joe, and Thomas, three artists, and killed the parents of the artists so that they can put Kira, Joe, and Thomas to work. By deciding what Kira, Joe, and Thomas make, the Guardians have a lot of power over the future. They decide how the people see the rest of the world and, by extension, how they act. At dawn, Christopher is ready to leave with Kira when he gets to the council edifice. Kira tells him she can't go with him. She has to stay and make the robe her own way, not the way the council wants her to. Christopher is shocked by her choice but he accepts it and says that Matt will take him back instead. Before he leaves, he gives Kira Wode, the plant that makes blue, and a handful of blue threads from his shirt. Kira goes back to the edifice, ready to weave blue into the robe and knowing that the future is in her hands. About the author. Lois Lowry was born in Hawaii. 
Her family moved frequently since her father was an army dentist. In 1939, for example, her family moved to Brooklyn, New York. In 1942, when her father was sent to the Pacific during World War II, the family moved to Pennsylvania. Lowry went to junior high school in Japan for two years when she was a girl. She went to high school in New York and got married to a military officer when she was 19. The Lowrys lived in California, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Florida in the early years of their marriage. They didn't move to Maine until the 1960s, when Donald found a steady job as a lawyer. Here, Lowry raised four kids and got an English degree at the same time. At age 40, Lowry released her first book, a children's story called A Summer to Die. The story was based on how Lowry dealt with the death of her older sister from cancer. The book did well in the marketplace. Also in this year, Lowry split up with her husband. During the 1980s and 1990s, Lowry continued to take care of her children and write a lot of books for kids. These included Number the Stars, 1989, and The Giver, 1993, which both won her the Newbery Medal, the top award for children's writing. She wrote three books that were vaguely linked to The Giver, a dystopian story. They were Gathering Blue, 2000, Messenger, 2004, and Sun, 2012. People have said that Lowry's books for kids are unusual in that they talk about very adult things. Gathering Blue, for example, has things like killing babies, murder, stealing, and eating them. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.